the passage has two key statements. The first one is, with the productivity of US industry stagnant or even declining slightly, the economic pie is no longer growing. The argument is made that labor leaders point to what they consider an unfair distribution of the slices of the pie to justify their demands for further increases in wage and benefits. The last statement, the conclusion says, until productivity resumes its growth, there can be no justification for further increases in the compensation of workers. The question is which of the following statements by a labor leader focuses on the logical weaknesses in the argument above. Option A says, although the economic pie is no longer growing, the portions of the pie allocated to American workers remain unjustly small. Uh, remains unjustly small. This is perfect. This does point out a logical weakness in the argument because the argument is that the economic pie is no longer growing. And that is why there is no justification for further increases in compensation of workers. But this says the economic pie is no longer growing, agreed, but that is irrelevant. The point is the portion of the pie allocated to, to the American workers remains unjustly small. So there's injustice in the portion allocated to American workers. And that is why it is, it is justified that they get a bigger piece of the pie. So whether the pie is not growing at all is not related. It is not relevant to this particular argument. So it does point out a flaw in the argument made in the passage. So A is a valid choice. Option B says, if management fails to accommodate the demands of workers, labor leaders will be forced to call strikes that will cripple the operation of industry. This is definitely not something that answers the question. It is not a logical weakness in the argument. What we are trying to do is basically weaken the argument made in the passage, at least the conclusion that's made at the end of the passage. But this says that labor leaders will be forced to call strikes that will cripple the operation of the industry. First problem, this is a potential conclusion. It is not an assertion that weakens the argument. So it's not relevant as an answer altogether. Second, if labor leaders are forced to call strikes that will cripple the operation of industry, that will actually further add to the problem. So in a way, this, this uh, strengthens the argument because if there's even more stagnation in industry, then the economic pie would also would start to decline the size of the economic pie would start to decline even further and that would in a way justify the argument made in the passage so b is all sorts of incorrect it can be eliminated option c tells us although productivity is stagnant the u.s population is growing so that the absolute size of the economic uh, economic pie continues to grow as well there are two problems with this one of them might be a little sketchy because that depends on outside information. If we think about this logically, if production is stagnant and the population is growing, there are more mouths to feed. So the absolute size of the economic pie continues to grow as well. Cannot be said. Absolute size of the economic pie does not grow just by adding numbers. It's rather, it is something that would that would cause, adding numbers would, would be, uh, is something that would cause further reduction in the slices of pie given to um, given to each worker or the the workers sector the us the sector of us workers american workers so so this is illogical then again it overlooks the problem although productivity is stagnant the us population is growing so there's so that the absolute size of the economic pie continues to grow as well it does not directly connect with the aspect of justification for increases in the compensation of workers. This tries to argue with this particular statement, which as we have seen from option A, is actually of low priority. It is something which can be obviated. The, the logical flaw has to connect with the conclusion. And the conclusion is that there is no justification for increase in workers' compensation. This does not connect with this. In fact, omits the idea of the compensation of workers altogether. So by comparison, A is a better choice. So C can be eliminated. 
D says, as a labor leader, I can be concerned only with the needs of working people, not with the problems faced by management. This is definitely not a potential answer because it does not point a logical flaw. See, the key word is a logical weakness in the argument. This is just outright, this outright ignores the problem. I'm not concerned with the problems of the management. I only care about the needs of the working people. So if at all this is considered a weakness in the argument, it cannot be. But if it is considered a weakness in the argument, it's definitely not logical. It basically turns away. It says that I don't care. There has to be justification. There is justification. There must be. Whether there is justification or not, there must be an increase in compensation of workers. That's what the idea that is that is uh, suggested by option D. So that definitely doesn't give us a potential answer. D can be eliminated. The correct answer is option A.